Hi, it's Chester Tugwell at Blue Pecan Computer Training. And in this video, we're gonna look at how to count and sum based on the background color of a cell. I have done another video that looks at the same problem, but it uses a solution called get.cell. So this video is for those of you who found that solution didn't quite work for you. This solution looks at creating VBA functions. Here's my scenario. I've got a list of products. I've got different colored backgrounds and some of the product names. Over here, I've got my first VBA function, count colored cells. So you're not gonna find this in Excel. It's not one of the native functions. It's something that I've created in VBA. It has two arguments. First is the range of cells that you're counting in. And then the second points at a cell that has the background color that you want to count in this range. In other words, it counts how many cells have that exact background color. And I've copied it down here, and then obviously it will count within the same range how many cells have this background color. The second custom function is called sum colored cells. It has three arguments. The first of which is the range of cells that you're applying your criteria to. The second argument points at an example of a cell that contains the background color that you're using for your criteria. And then the third argument is the position of the column within the table that contains the values that you want to sum up. In other words, in this one, it indicates that it's the second column of figures that I want to add up figures in. And obviously I can copy that down into this cell and it will sum the number of products that have a green background. To create the VBA functions, you need to be in the Visual Basic Editor. And to get to that, the easiest way is to use the shortcut key Alt F11. And what's quite useful is if you split your screen, so I'll just drag my Excel window over to the left, my Visual Basic Editor over on the right. You will need to create a module within your Visual Basic Editor for this workbook. And the way to do that is to go to Insert Module it will create a module for you. I've already got mine. I'm gonna double click on it, and then I'm just gonna close the Project Explorer so we can see these functions that I've already created for you. Let's concentrate on how to count cells with a particular colored background. And I've actually got two. You can decide on which version you find most useful. The first one is called count red cells. You can only use it to count red cells. So when you're creating a function, you start with the keyword function, then you state your function name. And then in brackets, you list the arguments that you want to include in your function. And I only have one argument in this one, which is range, the range of cells that you're going to count in. Then I've declared a variable, cell in range, and I've created a for each next loop. What I'm doing here is I'm saying for each cell in range, in other words, for each cell in the selection you've made in this argument, if the cell in range interior.color, so if the particular cell that you're looking at within the range that you've selected is red, to create a condition for the color red, I've used an RGB value, and I'll show you how to get to that RGB value or to find out what the RGB value is for another color. If you select a cell that contains, say, a red background, and then you do Control-1 on your keyboard, go to Fill, More Colors, and then Custom, you'll see that you've got your RGB values there, 25500, which you express in this way in VBA. I'll close that down. If the particular cell you're looking at has a background color of red, then count red cells equals count red cells plus one. So every time it comes across a red cell, it increments the count red cells value by one. Essentially, it counts the number of red cells. Now I've used that function, count red cells up here, but it only works for red cells. Here's the second function that enables you to count cells, but in this instance, you can count cells of any color because it has two arguments. Range is the range of cells you're counting in, and color is the particular color that you're using as your criteria. And I'm using the same for each next loop. 
I'm going through each cell in the range. You can see that there. And I'm saying if the cell in the range has a background color that is equal to the background color of the cell that you've used in your color argument, then add one to the count colored cells count. And again, it will just increment the count colored cells value by one each time it finds a matching color. Okay, so that deals with the counting functions. Let's have a look at the summing functions that I've created. The first one, sum red cells, that's been used here. So that has two arguments. It's got the range that you're applying your criteria to, and then a second argument that indicates the position of the column that you want to add up corresponding values in. You can see my two arguments in the Visual Basic Editor. You've got range as range, the range of cells that you're going to sum values in, and then sum col position, the position of the column within the table that you're going to add up corresponding values in. And I'm using the same for each next loop. I'm saying if the cell has a background color that's equal to red, then sum red cells equals cell in range. That'll be one of these cells here, offset by no rows and a specified number of columns. So that specified number of columns is returned by this argument here. If someone put in two as the column position, as in it's the second column that you want to add up corresponding values in, then we need to offset by one column. That's why I've written sum col position minus one. What you do is you take that value and you add it to any existing values that are in some red cells, and that will add up the corresponding values in the price column. But for example, if the prices were in the third column, some col position would be three. That's what the user would input in that argument. And we would need to offset by two columns. That's why some col position minus one would equal two. So hopefully you can see why minus one is necessary there. The second version of the sum if based on color called the function sum colored cells, and it has three arguments, range, color, and sum col position. Let's look at how that works again. Range is the range of cells that you're applying your criteria to. The second argument, which I've called color, refers to the cell that contains the background color that you're basing your criteria on. And sum col position is the position of the column within your table that contains the values you want to add up. Looking through this, I'm using a for each next loop again, and I'm saying if the cell interior color equals the same color that you specified in your color argument, then sum colored cells equals that value plus the value that's already assigned to sum colored cells. Again, that will add up all the prices for that particular color. Now those are the functions and I will post them on my website so you can copy them into your own project. But there is a little bit more code that you need to create and that's needed to enable the formulas to automatically update whenever you change the background color of a cell. For example, if I change the background color of product eight to green, what I'm expecting is that these formulas here will automatically update. They've not done so far, but if I click into another cell, you can see that they do update. If I change this background color to white, so I'm getting rid of one of the red products, click into another cell and you can see that those formulas update, as have these. Now to get that to work, what you'll need to do is open up your Project Explorer. Now I had that closed out, but if you go to View, Project Explorer, you'll need to double click on the sheet object for the sheet that you're working in. I'll double click on it there, then I'll close the Project Explorer. Up here in this first drop down, you'll need to choose Worksheet, and then you'll need to choose the Selection Change event from this drop down list. In fact, I think that's the default event, so you might not have to change that at all. But anyway, it will create a sub procedure that starts like this sub worksheet underscore selection change in sub when all you need to put between those two lines of code is calculate and that will refresh the spreadsheet whenever you make a selection change okay i will also put that little sub procedure on my website so you can copy that into your project that's all i want to cover in this video hopefully you found it useful but bye for now and i'll see you next video